Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Your Lake Fort Guide. We got an episode of the Guides Network and we got Mr. David Ozio. Man, thank you so much for joining us today. I greatly appreciate you having me, young man. Absolutely. David is a great fisherman in general, but he really does a lot of finesse fishing around Lake Fork. And so today, David's going to talk to you about drop shotting with plastic worms. I know it's something you like to do a lot, right? Uh, we do it a lot. And also, I fish a lot of the team tournaments there, the stringer tournaments. And we really specially uh, specialize in targeting the unders, going after fish that are under 16 inches. And to find the perfect size, 15 and a half to 16 inch fish, is a challenge just as much as it is trying to target the ones over 24 inches. Well, that and when a lake gets as much pressure as Lake Fork or when conditions are tough, and sometimes it seems like it always is. When you fish in a tournament, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Boy, a drop shot can really bail you out. Well, and it's especially the strong suit of a drop shot is the, the line size, and not enough people put enough credence in line size and how it can be an advantage or a disadvantage. So we're gonna go over that today and give you an idea of what we do, certain situations, the equipment, how we set it up, and uh, just to try to make you a better fisherman. Absolutely. One more thing, in case you didn't know, David Ozio is in the professional bowling <laughs> hall of fame. That's He's an, literally a hall of famer. That's the old life. This is the new life. But bro, like you're in the Hall of Fame <laughs> or something. Like the only thing I'm in the Hall of Fame of is being an idiot. Like I'm <laughs> I great think, at that. I don't think you're an idiot, but uh, losing fish. Uh, I, I might be in the Hall of Fame. I of was very fish. fortunate to have a skill uh, coming up, and as I was young, and uh, managed to turn it into wanting to go to the next level, which was the tour. The same guys that I had seen bowling on TV all the time, you know, I mean, I got pretty good at it, and then next thing you know, I'm button heads with those same guys, and pretty so. Cool. Uh, a dream come true. That's kind of how I feel when I fish Lake Fork every day and Mark Pax out there and all them guys, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's how I feel in my little small world. But, dude, I just I had to throw that out there because I wanted the people that weren't aware to know this dude's in the Hall of Fame for something. So, listen up because he's good at something. <laughs> at something. <laughs> All right, guys, the whole premise behind this is to give you an idea of what I do. And listen, I created this on my own uh, just through trial and error, and that is really the best teacher. Um, we spend so much time on the water, and whenever I got into the tournament segment of Lake Fork years and years ago, I mean, this turned out to be the best way to do well week in and week out, you know, and so, you learn all the hard knocks and you learn what's right, what's wrong, and what's going to be the best. And so what I'm going to do today is give you an idea of what I do as far as how I rig these things up, the type of rods that I'll use. And that is insanely important in the fact that too many people will rig a drop shot up on too heavy a rod. And then they don't even have a clue on how to set the drag up on the reel in order to maximize the efficiency. I mean, the, the weak link in this is when you're using a drop shot is number one, the light line, but also number two is, is the hook you're using. And if you'll notice here, I'm using a very, very, very small hook. It's a number two Gamagatsu wide gap offset. Okay, and the reason why we use the offset is is that it holds the worms on there better. As you can see right there, it's got the offset. So whenever you put the worm in there and go ahead and make it lay perfectly straight, it holds the worm on better. And so we fish a lot of wood. Uh, there's places where on fork there's rocks. Um, and then even on deep points where there's a lot of roots and garbage down there, that's why you want the weedless effect in order to, on that drop shot in order so you don't hang up quite so much, you know. And so part of that also is is the weight that I use. There's cylinder weights. There's 
teardrop weights, there's round, uh, there's lots of different shapes and sizes. I've even seen some diamond shape weights, but over time I've proved out that the teardrop weight is the best. It comes through the wood the best, it comes through rocks really good, uh, and it also has one major advantage as what you're going to learn here is it doesn't helicopter as bad going down. Whenever you cast out, a lot of times those things will go down like this, and what ends up happening over time I learned the hard way was was that it would make the line wrap around the tip of the rod drive you absolutely insane and so how I got around those problems over time with that in my rigging was was that let me pull out a little bit of line here and I will show you <clears throat> because we fish trees we'll fish docks um, just anything that we can flip to at certain times of the year and it becomes insanely necessary that you don't need that line wrapping around the tip. So if you'll notice here, I use a very small swivel. It is a Spro 35 pound swivel and I use that with good reason. And the reason why that swivel's on there is is that when this thing does helicopter down, going down, it doesn't twist the line nearly as bad and so you don't get the situation to where the line starts to wrap around the tip just like this. I mean, it will absolutely make you go bonkers, you know, and so that is the importance of the swivel. That's the number one importance. The number two importance of that swivel is, is that it allows me to change line size. All right, and so there's a lot of applications that I will use 12 pound line and on a leader, all right? And so you'll notice here on my main line, ahead of the swivel, I'll always use 12 pound monofilament. And the reason why I'm gonna use the monofilament is I want more stretch. I have to have the stretch because when we hook some 10, 11 pounders, biggest one I've ever caught on this rig right here is 1161 in a tournament at Lake Fork. And didn't break the line, didn't have a problem with it. The line stretch actually helped me to save that fish and get it in the boat. And it also protects in the small hook like this it didn't straighten out the hook and so there I've had cases in the past to where hooks have broken or hooks have straightened out on big fish and so you got to be real careful to make sure that your drag is set right and that'll alleviate a lot of the problems so the rig from the swivel down entails <clears throat> a length of line that is going to go down to the application in which you're fishing all right so from hook to weight I've asked, been asked this question a thousand times. Well, how big should my leader be? And the answer, the simple answer to that is, it depends on what you're fishing. I've won tournaments over there on that lake fishing two and three and four foot of water. And when you're fishing a drop shot in that shallow of water, you're gonna use a shorter leader. And so my weight is actually gonna be up here about three inches from the hook. All right, so that makes it real easy to work in that shallow water. And then also I'll go down to a quarter ounce weight or even a 3 16 ounce weight. But we had, I've won quite a few tournaments, matter of fact, fishing shallow with a leader no more than three inches long. All right, so when we start moving out into the water column a little bit, especially like say in April, then, and let's say we're flipping wood or we're fishing bridge corners or something like that, I'm gonna use just a little bit longer leader, maybe six inches to eight inches long, and that's where the weight will be is about that distance, all right? So we're fishing mid depths. I'm talking four foot to 10 foot. We'll use a leader about that long. Now, when you start getting out deeper than that, say going into May, even into early June, where we're gonna be targeting anywhere from 15 to 25 foot because those fish are going to move out and group up our leader will increase all right so i might even use as long as a 15 inch leader from hook down this far all right and so what that does is <clears throat> let me back up if I pull up on a point and I'm graphing that point and I see these fish sitting on this point and it looks like they're up off the bottom, then I'm going to set that leader substantially longer just because of that. If I happen to see them tucked in real tight to the bottom and you can see that there's notches down there and those are fish that are sitting square on the bottom, then I'm going to go with the shorter leader. And so. In a nutshell, that's why I adjust it based off what the Lowrance Electronics or the Humminbird Electronics tell me for that given day on that given type of application, whether it be a roadbed, a point, a ridge, 
whatever the case and so that's how we set that up now the next most important thing if I can get unhung here is the line that we're going to use I mean floor carbons I'm going to use on the leader from my swivel down to the weight and in real clear water situations I'm always going to size down on my line uh, Billy my buddy here, he's, uh, I don't know if he's got a 10 pound line in this boat or not. Twelve. I, I kind of don't think he does. Twelve. He says 12 is his minimum. I have even four pound line in my boat. I have four, six, or actually seven. I use seven pound line a lot. I've got some eight, 10, and 12. And I keep spools in there because it's easy to put on a different leader based off the application. You'll say, well, what would the application be? Prime example fishing a lake here recently and we pulled up there in the water you could see six foot down to the bottom and so my first thought was was that I've got to go to a lighter leader and so I had one rod with a 12 pound leader on it I set up one of my clients with an eight all right and so he totally kicked my behind with that eight pound leader and he had his son there so i sat down and re-rigged his son up with a seven pound leader and they just went to catch it on like son of a gun so and on the 12 pound i didn't get maybe an eighth of the bites that they got on the eight pound or seven pound line versus 12 pound line so food for thought right there alone the clearer the water the lighter the line you always want to use. And that will also help you in, let's say for example, January, February, when the water is really cold, the lighter the line that you can use per the application is going to give the bait just a little bit better action in that deeper water scenario. And it will add more bites, you know, into your live well for that day in that given tournament. Also, in those January, February tournaments, I'm going to use smaller worms. All right, this is a five inch worm. <clears throat> that uh, is a, a standard, you know, just a standard worm, but there's just so many more baits that you can go with. You know, whenever I get up into, say, April, May, I'm going to lengthen that worm out to a longer worm, a seven inch worm, a straight tail worm. And the reason why I use these straight tail worms is they have better action. The tail will move around, and whenever you move that worm in the water, you want it, you want it bouncing around to where the tail is moving, but you don't want to overwork a drop shot. That's the biggest problem that too many people have whenever they're throwing drop shot. They're working it like a Carolina rig, and that's just way too fast, all right? And then other applications uh, we might use like this Six Sense Divine Shaky Head Worm, all right? The thing I like about these types of worms is it's a fatter worm, all right? There are certain times of the year where I'm trying for bigger fish, but this will also catch a good two and a half pound under. I'll use the fatter worm in order to have a shot at not only catching an over, but catching an under. And that really will happen in April, May, when I'll use a, a lot of those fatter worms like this. And so uh, this is always something to, you know, keep in tune with because a bigger worm like that is going to produce better fish. Now, the colors, people always ask me about the colors. Um, that three, I'll, I'll basically use three colors, all right? I'm going to use a watermelon-based color. I'm going to use a green pumpkin type color. And then I'm going to use a June bug red color like this divine is right here. And, the, and if the water's dark and dingy, it's overcast like it is today this is a good choice in water that has clarity down to say 15 inches all right with no sun darker worm like this will always produce better especially if you're fishing deep um, when the water is warmer and more clear then i'm going to actually go back to more brimmy looking worms like something that's uh like a green pumpkin magic or a watermelon candy magic or whatever the case but most of the time I'm going to use something that's in a smaller worm like this in order. And that could be a watermelon, could be a green pumpkin, or it could even be the June bug red. So those three colors are something I'm going to live with. And I have used before in severe clear water applications, a morning dawn color. Morning dawn on a sunny day, any time of the year, will actually produce way more bites than just about any other worm if the water's clear, if the water's calm, and if it's sunny. 
so keep that in mind that's going to help you to produce more fish all right <clears throat> let's touch base into the equipment side of it and this will give you a good idea of where you're making your mistakes the rod that i'm going to use almost always is going to be a 6 to 12 pound line rating all right people probably don't even know that there's a line rating on rods and when you look right here on the side of this rod right here it has line rating uh 6 to 12 uh 3 16 ounce and it's an extra fast tip all right that is a perfect rod for the drop shot now the second thing is i use bait casters uh and the reason why that i'll use a bait caster on a drop shot is because when we're targeting boat docks or targeting wood or targeting shallow brush piles when we're flipping to those things uh, to those targets I'm way more accurate with a bait caster than I am a spinner rod is it against the rules to use a spinner rod absolutely not spinner rods are fantastic for this application and they're easier to find in a 6 to 12 line rating all right so that'll help you right off in order to um, you know get the right rod for the application in which you're doing but for targeting i can flip this into a cup at 10 yards away with no problem so accuracy is a big goal especially when i'm pitching to a stump pitching to a lay down off the shoreline or pitching to a boat dock and so that's why we choose to use a bait caster the second part of that is is the reel you're going to choose choose a reel that's got um uh, exceptionally good drag and so many people will have too much drag they'll have it tightened up too much and I've even seen instances where I've taken people out and this just happened about three weeks ago with the client that <clears throat> he would never use 10 pound line because I'll break it off he says and I said no you won't not at the equipment set up right well he had the hardest time understanding that so we pull up on a point and I have him rigged up with this same thing I'm telling you right now. 10 pound leader, small worm, bait caster, throws out there. We start working this point that morning. And lo and behold, he sticks a good fish and he's fighting this fish. And it's in the four to five pound class. And the next thing I know, he gets the fish close to the boat and the line breaks. I noticed his thumb was on the spool. And I said, did you have your thumb on the spool? And he said, well, yeah, he was pulling too much drag. What's the drag for, all right? And so I caught him and I said, you can't do that. You can't put your thumb on the spool because it's critical to have the drag set perfectly, all right? Now you say, well, what's perfectly? In the science world, how you determine what one third of the tensile strength of your line is, is what you're after. So if I'm using a 12 pound leader on this right here, I want four pounds of drag. Well, then you ask me, how do I get to four pounds of drag? The scientific way would be to get one of those scales that have the slide bar, all right, on it, where whenever you, you put something on it and you it weighs it down, the bar moves to show how many pounds that it went to, even though that whenever you let up on it, that little bar will stay there, four pounds, five pounds, whatever the case. Take that scale and affix it to an object about 20 or 30 feet away. Take the line, the end of the line here, tie it off to the other end of the scale. Back up about 30 foot, reel down, set the hook. All right, you start off with a light drag. Whenever you set the hook, the drag will slip. All right, and then you go over there and look at the scale, lift it up off the bar, off the wherever you've got it affixed to, and look and see where the bar moved. If it says two pounds, then you your drag is too loose. Tighten up on your drag just a little bit more. Back up that 30 foot. Reset your scale. Back up. Set the hook again. Swing on it. Drag will slip then you'll go back and check it again. When you get that at four pounds, bingo, you're in the right spot. Now, get back to your back to your rod over here, start pulling the line out and feel what four pounds feels like, all right? And then you'll get used to it over time to the point to where whenever you re-spool new line or something like that on there, you'll know exactly where the sweet spot is for this 12 pound. As you go down to 10, as you go down to eight, as you go down to six even, you'll learn that Wow, I've got to have way more drag involved in that because if a big fish hits this, 
he's going to be towing some line, right? And all you got to do is just get on the troll motor and follow him. Let him tire out. Too many people won't tire the fish out, and that's what you've really got to do because in most applications, whatever you're fishing, which we'll talk about here a little later on, um, you're not going to get in much trouble. Just let him, especially if it's a double digit, just let him tire himself out. Most people, as this gentleman did, I had out on the lake a couple of weeks ago, he got too excited. He just had to have this fish in the boat. Right after that, after I re-rigged him and set the drag back up again for him, he threw out there and he was fishing, fishing, fishing. Next thing you know, he had a big fish on. And he's reeling this fish, and he's reeling. I'm watching his thumb, and it was the hardest thing in the world for him to do to play that fish because he just, I, I have to get this fish in the boat. It took him a good six minutes by the time I got this fish in the net, and when I did, it was six pounds. He couldn't believe it. He just couldn't believe he didn't break off. And then right behind him, I catch a five-pounder. All right. And so he said, well, now I see. I did not know that this was the way you do this. And so I have people hire me all the time just to go out and go through drip drop shot drills on what to do per that time of the year, per the application. What are the things that are going to make me a better fisherman? The whole thing is, is the number of bites you get in one day. Billy and I go back and forth on this all the time. I'm a numbers guy. He wants to get 10 pounders in the boat every time he casts. So we have a difference in here in the way we approach the game. There's nothing wrong with the way he approaches it, and there's nothing wrong with going after numbers. And even though they might be two and three pounders, you know, people have a lot of fun doing that. So it depends on what your goal is for that day on that lake. If you're looking for a big fish, he's the man. He knows exactly how to do this. So um, I also go for big fish also, but I, I, my whole goal is, is for the person to have a great day on the water. All right, so now that you know about the drag, now that you know about uh, the setup and everything, spinning rods are going to be the exact same thing. All right, spinning rod is when you set that drag, it's no different. Same procedure, you're just going to turn that knob on it until you get the drag just right for whatever leader you're using. Now, remember, your baseline on the spool is going to be 12 pound is what I use on a, on a uh, bait caster. But I may vary that on my leader. All right. I've had times when I'm using seven pound. I've had times eight, sometimes 10. All right. So I'm going to have to adjust the drag in order to compensate for that. And once we have all that in order, then uh, you know what? We're ready to go find the spot we're going to fish for that day. And a lot of people will say, well, where do I use the drop shot at? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. And <clears throat> the different lengths of the leader from weight to bait is going to be different per whatever you're fishing and even more importantly what time of the year during january and february a lot of times i'm fishing 25 to 35 foot of water all right and sometimes i'm using a longer leader than i would be at other times you know so and also i'm going to be using lighter line at that time of the year also and also a smaller worm and um it could be a point it could be a road bed it could be the top of a hump. It's all in what your graph tells you for that time of the year. As we get up into, say, March and even April, I'm going to target, uh, you know, I mean, laydowns, places where fish are going to move to stage up to in order to spawn. It depends on the lake level, too, especially on Lake Fork. The lower the lake, the more woods exposed and more targets for you to throw to. A lot of people will throw a chatterbait next to a stump, throw a shaky head next to a stump. A lot of times I'm going to throw a drop shot next to a stump. I get a lot of bites doing it and you know what it's proved out over time. So during March and April and even May, fish have a tendency to be around wood and so this application comes in really really handy. As we get up into June, more so third week of May into June, then I'm going to start focusing back out into those deeper tranches of whether they're a point, whether they're a ridge, where these fish are going to gang up, and I'm going to look for them on the electronics, and then I'm usually going to use 12-pound line because the fish are going to be bigger, and I'm going to use a little bit bigger worm on that also. Now, back to the hook I was talking about. There's times when I'm using a bigger worm like this one right here, a fat worm, instead of using a number two Gamagatsu, and this is a small hook, I'll use a number one or even a one-aught if I'm using a fatter worm like this right here. 
in this uh, divine worm. So <clears throat> it all depends on what you're trying to use per the time of the year. As you get into July, same the same game applies, same tactics, uh, but then it changes up a little bit as we get up into August. Fishing starts to get a little bit tougher, water temps are really high, then we'll start to migrate more towards brush piles. And I'll still run this same application in those brush piles. Example, pulled up on a brush pile one day, August the 21st, and was throwing a 10 inch worm into this brush pile with a half ounce weight. Worked that brush pile all the way around, all the way around, all the way around, and no bites, you know. So <clears throat> came up to the front of the boat, I pit lifted the troll motor up, I glanced at my drop shot rod, and I thought, hmm. So I picked it up, and I'd already pulled the trolling motor up, and I just undid it. I flipped it out there into the brush pile, lifted up, and I went, what the? Set the hook, eight and a half pounder, all right? He didn't hit the worm on 17 pound line going all the way around that brush pile but as soon as I flip 12 pound line in there bingo eight and a half pounder in the boat game on so that was in August August September things like that are going to uh, brush piles are always going to be a player all the way through the fall even into December all right so as you graduate through september uh, a lot of times then we'll even go back to using these things shallow again and on creeks when we get around creeks going into the fall um, i've had a lot of a lot of situations where i'll pull down on a creek bend where three four foot depth of water right outside the creek on a bend throwing onto the other side of the creek and dragging the drop shot through the creek into the creek and we've had some fantastic days doing that and that's in the fall and going into October, even into November. And uh, once you get into December, I've had a lot of places where you can start looking for bass <clears throat> in the middle of, the middle of coves, middle of pockets, big creek arms. Those fish will gather up right out there in the middle of it. And uh, you know what? Use your electronics, you find them. This is a home run ticket to catch those fish. So, um, all that being said, um, I think I've got you pretty well updated on, you know, how to do it and what to do as far as that goes. Now your question is, well, how do I work it? The thing about a drop shot that's unique is, is um, it is a fish catch a machine but you cannot work it too fast and uh billy and i have been talking about a deal where we're going to do a challenge someday of maybe the shaky head versus a drop shot i am so looking forward to that putting a hurting on him that's my goal and uh so uh but we'll eventually do that game and get a video to y'all whenever that day does happen and i've already had a lot of people ask me about it have y'all shot that video yet i said no but we will eventually so but uh, as far as the way you work it on a bait caster we'll pull up different times of year say it's say it's may or june and we'll get up on a point we see those fish down there in 18 to 25 foot we're going to cast it like we would a carolina rig long cast and then the thing you want to do get up here in the front the thing you want to do <clears throat> with with the drop shot here is is and this is a key i'm gonna make a cast here long cast with it like that all right you're gonna pull out a bunch of slack let it sink all right and so you want to do this like you would fishing a texas rig worm in shallow water notice how the rod is up here high at a high angle all right and see how this i'm just going to lightly shake that shake that worm just barely shake it too many people will do this they'll bounce it around like this they're moving the weight they're hopping the weight of off the bottom you do not want to do that with a drop shot and the best way that i can describe this is is what you're looking at down there on the bottom this will give you the best visual of it is is that you want to move the bait and not the weight always remember that now watch this shoot it down here billy this is what you're after see this i'm gonna lightly shake the head notice that the worm is moving but the weight's not that is the most important thing that you can learn about using a drop shot slower is always better so that you can see when i make a cast here same thing pull out slack let the links let it go ahead and sink on down keep your rod up at 11 o'clock position shake it very 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 lightly you can see the tip is barely moving you pick up a little bit of slack you can move it towards you about two or three foot or two or three inches i mean i'm sorry uh six inches whatever the case as soon as you pick up the slack pause it just a little bit 
shake it just lightly, 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 give the worm some action, pause it again. There's been so many times that we've had fish hit this bait whenever the bait is sitting dead still, basically dead sticked. And that's sometimes critical in itself. There's times when the fish are moody, they don't want to bite, and so the dead sticking technique is something that's going to add more bites for the, you know throughout the day. So, Holy cow, you're really in the drop shot today. That was a lot of information, dude. I appreciate that. Well, it's it, man, I'll tell you what. The whole goal behind this thing is is to catch more fish. That's right. And anytime I take somebody out, my major goal is is numbers. I want to see if I I can, you know, put people on enough fish to have an absolute great day. And I mean, I do have people that will call me and say that I'm interested in catching some big fish, and a lot of times if they're looking for a double digit, I'll send them over him. You know, I mean, it's not that I can't go catch them. I don't as much specialize yeah. in the double digits as much as I would just catching some numbers and having a great day on the water. But you know as well as I do, and you probably know better than I do, that a lot of times fishing with finesse techniques is the way to catch those bigger bass. They're especially on lakes like Lake Fork that get the pressure. Then. At certain times of the year. Right. Especially post spawn. Drop shot in a post spawn application, woo, is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, you can catch some big ones doing it. Well, man, I can't thank you enough. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I bet they did, because that was a lot of really great information. It was certainly way better. And this is why I like bringing guys like David on here, because it's a different perspective on a technique that, to be honest with you, will I drop shot? Have I drop shot? Yes. Will I drop shot when I feel like I have to? Of course I will. Uh, it's not something I do a whole lot of and all that time with that technique in your hand you've got a lot more helpful information than I could ever give so thank you for coming on here and doing this for us brother enjoyed it hope you guys enjoyed it too drop us a comment let us know what you thought of David's drop shot I don't even know what to call this like <laughs> I don't know either like this is a seminar it's a it's a it's a I don't know it's a really really in-depth in detail you did a great job on that so thank you for that let us know what you thought of it. Hey, we appreciate you guys watching. As always, do us a favor. Go, go support our sponsors that are linked in the description. If you go to sixcentsfishing.com, be sure you punch in that code, Your Lake Fork Guide. You'll get a 10% discount on anything you order. Other than that, we've rambled enough, man. We've rambled. Time to move on. Thank you guys for watching today. We'll see you next time right here on Your Lake Fork Guide.